Ah, <laughs> Well, how's everybody doing? Well, today we are going to uh, begin with the moon in Taurus in a woman's birth chart. We're going to do part one and part two. And we are going to jump right in because we have a lot to cover with the moon in Taurus. Understand that the moon in Taurus represents the fixity of Earth. I mentioned in the other, uh, in uh, part one and two, in the males, that Taurus, the moon in Taurus, represents nature and the beauty of nature. We discuss this as the inner feminine in a man's chart and the animus in a woman's chart. We all have this duality of the sexes within us, as above, so below. Understand that God, or as the Jewish uh, tradition likes to call him, Elohim. Elo uh, is uh, feminine, and Im is masculine. Feminine, masculine. Elohim is even in the language of the gods. The duality of the sexes is very embedded even in the language. So understand that God is both feminine and masculine, and so are we. We possess, we may possess a masculine outer shell, but it is not independent of the cohesiveness of the inner feminine. Women like to be with men that are not 100% all masculine, like a man who lifts weights and he's so solid, there's nothing mushy and squishy about him. He, so he's like a rock. Women don't like that. Women like to feel the man. Yeah, they like a man who's muscular and tight, but not to the point where you can even feel him because now the muscularity has become the wall encapsulating the spirit. And this is wrong for use of sexual energy. Remember, Taurus is the opposite of Scorpio, the principle, the Kundalini, the seat of sexual energy. It resonates from, from Scorpio through Taurus. Which is why Taurus is so sexual. It's pulling from its opposite polarity, Scorpio. Rum and Coke. With a little scotch of lime. Delicious. Delicious. <laughs> okay. So understand that the moon in Taurus represents these principles in both the man and in the female. Now, we are going to jump right in and discuss the specificity, psychologically, of how the moon in Taurus is operant psychologically and behaviorally in the, in the human female. Okay? Uh, understand that the moon in Taurus, the moon in Taurus woman, is an emotional well-being in and of herself. But the emotional well-being of the Torian woman is connected and contingent upon her material comfort. If she is not materially comfortable, you don't have a happy woman. The Taurus woman or the moon in Taurus woman requires a certain level of comfortability for her to be psychologically safe, to feel psychologically safe, and be able to be herself in her environment. If she doesn't experience a certain level of comfortability, then the energies of Venus are thrusted. Now we have a problem with the Taurus uh, woman, or the moon in Taurus woman. Here, we have the sparkling, tempestuous, fiery <laughs> energy of Aries now coalescing into form. And this form is different in manifestation in a man's chart than it is in a woman's chart. The moon in Taurus in a woman's chart is extremely dynamic, beautiful, sensual, but very, very unpredictable, volatile, and down downright demonic. The opposite is Scorpio. So the Taurus woman is not easy. 
or that she appears to be. Mm-hmm. Oh, I know. I know. Remember, she's another dangerous one. Right? She's ruled by Venus, which rules Libra. Mm, you all know. You all know. <laughs> okay? So, um, yeah. That's the first thing that you have to contend with with the uh, moon in Taurus woman, or uh, the moon in Taurus in a woman's chart. Okay? She loves to cook. And she's a fantastic cook. Oh, my God. She'll grab a man, trap a man, and take another woman's man just solely on her cooking. Oh, my goodness. I swear. <laughs> okay, I, wanna, I don't want to make this about me. But, but really, oh, my goodness. I mean, the food is sex. What, what did I tell you? Good food, good sex, and good company. The three things that makes the Taurus woman or the moon in Taurus woman happy as fuck. Okay? She is heaven to any man that loves sex on a continual basis. But with this woman, you ain't gonna just, what is it, gang bang, thank you man, and keep it moving. No, you, you, you're not gonna fuck this woman. You have to make love to this woman. She is a creature of sensuality, the ruler of Venus. The sexual expression psychologically in the mind and in the body is slow, simmering, seething, seething, oozing sensuality. This woman has to be completely plugged in in the five senses or she's not going to enjoy sex with you. Ah, no, not going to happen. Not going to happen. With both the Taurus man and the Taurus woman, but more so the moon in Taurus woman. Okay, it's delicious. I should have put lime a long time ago. Okay. So, another thing about the moon in Taurus woman is that she loves art. I mean, she really likes art. I mean, the genuine love of it. <laughs> She can go to the Metropolitan Museum of Art in New York or the British Museum in London and the woman will be enamored, enraptured of the Museum of Louvre in Paris. Start, oh, <laughs> I can't tell because I'll start to cry. <laughs> I'll start to cry. My decan is Taurus. Remember, I'm very good with the Taurus decan. So I know, you know, just, 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 the tears well up in your eyes just looking at a $10 million painting. The few eyes have seen. These are the sensual pleasures and indulgences of Taurus, particularly the Taurus moon, and especially in the woman, the moon in Taurus in a woman's chart. Okay? She is a woman, though, that... Because of her need of material wealth and security, she often attracts wealth in her life. Oh my God. Every Taurus woman that I've ever known has had money beyond belief. And they're so casual about it. And it's beautiful to see how this sign, earth sign, is king and queen when it comes to that green, that cheddar. It's amazing. Absolutely amazing. And the way they conserve money is, uh, is anything other than amazing. Like cancer, which is why the moon is exalted in Taurus, the ruler of cancer, because cancer is a fantastic money, maker. money maker. Fantastic money maker. And if you meet a Taurian that is a fantastic money maker with the moon in Taurus exalted, understand that that comes from cancer. The great, fan, fantastic, let me tell you, money maker. Wait until I get to the moon in cancer. The banker, the financier, like J.P. Morgan, or, or the Rothschilds, or the Ford Foundation. All of these are cancerian foundations. So understand the power inherent with the moon uh, in Taurus. The moon is the most unstable planet or satellite in our solar system. 
but in the sign of Taurus, it is where it is most stable and therefore exalted. If you have a woman with the moon in Taurus, listen, the sky. Remember, remember Henny Penny? When we were in, 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 in grade school, Henny Penny, the sky is falling, the sky is falling. Yeah, Goosey Lucy, Turkey Lurkey. Remember that that fable? That right there is a, a, a it's a Torian story. Oh yes, it's a Torian story. I'm going to let you do the homework, and then you'll see what I'm talking about. Very earthly, and very, like, two-dimensionally. You know, the sky is falling because something fell off the head. You know, that's the innocent naivete. Upupidu of Taurus. The Venus expression that we see in Libra also is expressed in Taurus, but in a different way than it does in Libra. I mentioned that in, in part one and two of the moon in Taurus in, in a man's chart. Okay, so understand that when you see that innocence and that upupidu, even in the man in Taurus, understand that for the you are experiencing the rays of Venus expressing herself in personality through this kind of like innocence. You all know what I'm talking about. Now, understand for the Taurus woman or for the moon in Taurus woman, there has to be a certain level of stability, of emotional stability. Em emotional stability lends to psychological stability. And psychological stability lends to rightful physical behavioral action. Especially if it's a woman that has children that depend on her mental stability. The moon in Taurus is powerful, but it's also very vulnerable and very delicate. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. So, you have to understand that if you're going to deal with very this very sensitive, sensual, and beautiful woman of nature. Remember, she is the earth goddess. Capricorn is the earth queen. Virgo is the earth maiden. And Taurus is the earth goddess. You know, the very essence of our earth. And when it comes to understanding this woman, you are going to have to really plug yourself into the rhythms of nature, both of the woman and of the female energy that envelops our own planet, which is feminine in nature. And the, the men tend to really embrace this more so than the women. The women like to express that roughness, boo, 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 yeah, that, that, that Scorpio polarity, yeah, the, y y y y no, you do. But I'm mad at you, though. I love you all the same, either way, because it, it, it takes strength to demonstrate that, to express that, and to be comfortable in your own skin, expressing that kind of a polarity. Okay? I mean, that's wonderful. I love it. Now, another thing about uh, the, the moon in Taurus woman. She oscillates. From being a conservative to being a spender, a real lavish spender. She will go to periods where she is very frugal and then periods where she is very um, generous and loose with her spending. When she goes through these phases, most of the spending go on her. <laughs> She'll take that cruise and buy a, a Birkin bag. You know, a Birkin bag is like ten thousand dollars, right? Or uh, she and with the Birkin with the Birkin bag, you know, she's gonna have a, a Cartier diamond, and the Cartier alone is millions. And then, of course, she's gonna have a Swarovski, which of course is 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 is, is, is glass, crystal glass, but it's Swarovski. Come on, so she's gonna be like decked out, out. I mean, you're gonna go out, you know. Oh, she's going to give it to you when she comes into that cruise. Those shoes are Manolo shoes or Nine West. No, Manolo shoes. You know, that can go for anywhere for 2000 and up. So, Taurus woman is all 
and she's expensive. They have most expensive perfumes and have the best kind with less alcohol. Oh my goodness. You're talking about you're talking about the best of the best of the best that money can buy. This is the power of Earth. The fourth ray. Emitting itself through Taurus, through the agency of the planet Venus. We are in the fourth period in our planet, the height of material wealth that our planet has ever experienced in this lifetime, or in the lifetime of our planet, which is 4.5 billion years old. So understand that the history of our planet itself is Taurian, and the Earth is Earth Mother. So we we can and so the moon in Taurus. Whenever you see a full moon reflecting upon the oceans of our planet, that right there, that beautiful image is the exaltation of the moon in Taurus, reflecting itself in the beauty of our planet. That same beauty you can see in the moon in Taurus woman, when she gives you a subtle smile, which can light up a room, or can make men weak in their knees. She is Phallus Athena, Venus, Vishnu, you know, Aphrodite, Dido, Pele, Diana, Demeter, Isis, you know, all these are primordial archetypes. The matriarch is inherited in the behavioral psychosocial expression of the moon in Taurus or the moon in Taurus woman. Okay. But it's extremely subtle though. Many men may mistake the Taurian woman or the moon in Taurus woman for being inactive or, 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 or being ineffectual because that's really the, 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 uh, the complaint that we hear most often is that the Taurus woman or the moon in Taurus woman is ineffectual. She just sits there and is alone and, and it's almost like she's not there, you know. But yeah, her very presence and her powerful sense of stillness, which is reflective of the true essence of nature, is what makes her so powerful and transforms everyone and everything around her. We just hope that the, every woman out there that possesses the moon in Taurus understands this divine beauty in them and that that is what makes them great goddesses incarnate in the human form. Kudos to you, the moon in Taurus woman, or the, or the, the Taurus woman. Okay. Now, let us discuss another point. Discuss, discuss, uh, discussing still the feminine, psycho-emotional aspect. Psycho-emotional aspect of the Torian woman. And the psycho-emotional aspect of the Torian woman, which is actually very true of all women, not just the Torian woman, you know, but we see this resonating very powerfully when the moon is in Taurus and also when the moon is in Sagittarius. And we'll talk about the moon in Sagittarius in a little while. As it exclusively, it is connected to the, uh, the woman. Because the moon in Sagittarius is very different than the moon in the uh, in Sagittarius in a man's chart, right? So, but so the same dynamic that you see here, we see it in Taurus. In Taurus, which is Earth, Sagittarius, which is fire, it is an elemental square, okay? And we see this as a first quarter or third quarter lunar phase, which we will talk much later on when I do another series concerning the phases of the moon and how it affects the mundane chart in both personality and at the soul level, which will be esoteric astrology, okay? So, discussing now how this psycho-emotional dependency, and sometimes called dependency, is something that we see inherently with the moon in Taurus, or the moon in Taurus woman, is when we're talking about the area of sex. Oh, here we go. The opposite of Taurus is Scorpio. We have to discuss that because that actually creates an oppositional, uh, an oppositional, 180 degree opposition between the moon and the sun when Taurus is opposed to Scorpio. So that, that, that doesn't mean that every moon in Taurus position opposes 
Scorpio. Because not everyone is a Scorpio. I have a sun sign in Scorpio. But it can present a T-square or a 90 degree square, depending on the other fixed signs that, that any of the planets in the horoscope can harbor. So then, because the moon is very, it, it is the psychology of the personality. The moon is important. So any strong aspects to the moon from these other planets, the inner or the outer planets, will figure in the psychological makeup of the person. So we have to consider the aspects as well, as long as the moon faces. Not just the placing of the moon, but also the aspects and what it does and how it moves in transit, in secondary progressions, and in the trances that occur mundanely daily in the, in the daily horoscope. So, um, the sex arena. Let's talk about that for a little bit. Okay, you know, like I said, the material comforts are paramount, but sex has to be just as important. It is just as important, and it is, and it is extremely necessary. Otherwise, the 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 moon in Taurus woman is not going to be a happy woman. She's going to be angry, irritable, nasty, mean, cruel. She's going to pull from the opposite polarity of Scorpio. So if you want a happy woman, keep her happy in the bedroom. And if you're not that man to fulfill it, let her go. Because eventually, she will either cheat on you if we're dealing with a woman who's young or less evolved. Either way, it's disastrous. It's disastrous. She'll pay for the infidelity as well. So, but, but... Infidelity in a woman sometimes, and I don't want to make excuses for it, but there has to be more communication sexually so these things don't occur. And communication when it comes to sex between a man and a woman is a very brave thing. And not many men stand for the task. Hopefully, this will change with the millennials, who seem to be more carefree and more casual about sex, and the generations that precede them. Let's hope so. You know, safely, however, of course. You know, but we have a lot to learn from this new and incoming generation. They seem to have no barriers, and they seem to have no moralized restraints, like we from the 60s and 50s still hold dear, and has defined who we are, who we were, came from, and eventually uh, we're going to probably exit this planet with these same constitutional constructs in which we uh, implemented when we were born. So, so the best thing I can do as an astrologer that's an OG from the 60s, you know, raised in the 80s, the very generation that we now see millennials and those that preceded them. So I'm an astrologer for those born in the 80s and 90s. I'm speaking to this particular generation and those of the 70s, you know. No, we are here to evolve our current evolutionary state, bring it up a notch or two. No, and the moon placing in the horoscope points towards this direction for the personality to, to, to take. And if guided and nurtured by the soul, it can be the very path of liberation and also transcendental union with God, whatever that might be or mean to you. Because at the end of the day, all is relative, right? And God, in a sense, is also relative. Everything falls under relativity. Because you have to understand that we are living on a hologram or in a hologram. Okay? This is not real. This is a great lie, a great dream, in which one day we will wake up from. One way to wake up from it is death. But it doesn't have to be death. We can experience death in consciousness and then transform from the lower nature of our being and connect to the higher level of our own divinity. This is what the Egyptians and all the ancient wisdom teachings of the ages have professed over the millennia. We can do that. But, you know, 
at the current moment, we're under the demiurgic influence that does not want us to reach this point of evolution and growth. But with the Aquarian period here, Taurian will lead the way with all the other signs, and we're done with part one.